16 if he tries to keep it himself. They're going to run the option. Pitch it. Here's Rawls. Can he get there? No, because Sinceri unloads on the running back. Number three did his job. He had the pitch man, Herbie. Manziel, deep right side. Tipped. Could be intercepted. Sonseri has it. Vinny Sonseri, who returned one for a touchdown against Vatek, needs a block, needs one more, spins, he's got a touchdown! Wow. Well, when you get a decent play like that on the inside and you get it to one of your playmakers, Sonseri just can smell that goal line, gets the blocks from behind, gets the blocks from the front, and takes it to the house. He joins us every single Thursday now, 1 o'clock, here on the Jay Barker Show with Lars Anderson, Kerry Adams, and we welcome in Vinny Sinceri. Vinny, what's happening, my man? What's up, brother? How's it going down there? Man, going good. Weather's getting better, a lot cooler, and I know it's going to be a lot cooler up in Knoxville coming up this weekend for this big matchup against Tennessee. But before we start that, I've got to ask you, where were you born? I was looking at your dad's resume. Were you born in Pittsburgh, Iowa, Illinois, Louisville, or Alabama? <laughs> I was born in Pittsburgh, PA, but uh, like you said, moved around a lot growing up. That's awesome. I mean, your dad's had an unbelievable career, not just in the uh, in college, but also uh, in the NFL. He spent some time at Tennessee. Uh, do, do you remember much about that as far as f for him and what that was like coaching uh, with the Volunteers? You know, it was a short stint. He was only there for a year. Um, he, he liked Knoxville. It was just a tough situation to come into. Uh, Derek Dooley was on his way out and uh, they just, he didn't have the time to really ch change the program, change the chemistry, recruit the kind of guys that he wanted to recruit. So it was a tough situation, and uh, you can see that uh, Coach Pruitt's having to deal with the same thing right now. Let's go back to last week's game. Uh, what did you see? We'd love to get your take on just some of the uh, areas you think Alabama's uh, either improved on or continues to need to work on. What, what's your thoughts about uh, this team so far? You know, I think this team is maturing and on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, I think they're finally coming into their own. They're learning how to play as a cohesive defensive unit uh, from the front seven to the back four. I, I think everybody's kind of coming into their own. They're learning how to obviously play together. Uh, I think the one thing that they have to continue to do is, is strive to be an Alabama defense week in and week out. I think whenever you go up against ULL or whenever you play like a team like Arkansas, you can't play down to their level. You have to continue to strive to be the best if you want to uh, win a national championship and they did that against Missouri but that's because the media the coaches and everybody was saying what what is this Alabama defense can they live up to the years past hype can they do everything like they did at the beginning of the season and then they then they play well that week I want them to play well whenever everybody's saying they're great and saying that they can do all these things and until they do that I think that this team of uh, this defensive unit especially is uh just going to be a young, immature team, to be honest. What do you think about Sevillon's uh, his two interceptions, the way that he played, and then you know, I guess coming back from uh, being benched and then getting his chance and, and making the most of it against Missouri this past weekend. You know, you stay uh, as a defensive player and as a football player, you have to have amnesia, and they get they get scholarships too, and they got recruited too and they're good football players and they're going to end up making plays against you but you can't allow it to drag you down for the rest of the game and for the rest of the season and for him to come out and play like he did was something special I think uh, I think he found his confidence I think he found his groove and I think he's going to continue to grow upon that game uh, especially with the guys that he's surrounded with but again it comes back to how mature are you 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 played a great football game but that's because you got it was, was it because you got benched and you then Went into the playbook, you were able to dissect the game plan and go out there and execute it? Or was it because you're a professional now and now that you have the two picks, can you come back, play Tennessee, play well, and show Nick Saban and Tosh Lupoy that you are a guy that they can count on week in, week out? What did you see out of Tua? Uh, statistically, it wasn't his best game, 12-22. Uh, and do you, from your vantage point, do you think the knee was bothering him, or was it just what Missouri was doing on defense? What was your just analysis of, of Tua and his performance? I think it's kind of funny how we're like, yeah, he just didn't live up to what we expect. He's still averaging 12, 12 uh, yards of pass. He had an 82.7 QBR. I mean, he played well, but, yeah, you could tell that his knee was bugging him. He wasn't the same person that we had seen the previous uh, six weeks. I think he's going to be okay. Coach Saban even said that 
uh, if need be, he could have came back in the football game and played, but there's no reason to rush it. They were, they had the game under control, but you can see how big of a piece he is to this offensive puzzle and how different the football game was whenever he wasn't in. Um, there was nine points scored when he was uh, out of the game, one rushing touchdown and a safety, and it's not going to get it done. And if we don't have him against LSU, we don't have him against Mississippi State, and we don't have him against Auburn, and in the SEC Championship, I just don't think this team can go anywhere without him. And quite frankly, um, can't win it. Can't win in uh, any big games. Yeah, and we were talking about this earlier. There's a chance for a really bad weather in the game, and with really bad weather, sometimes it becomes really tough to throw. Um, after a big storm, when it's wet and it's still slick. Man, offenses love that. We know where we're going, so we're running double moves and all types of stuff to get defensive backs uh, slipping and falling. But if it was, say, a monsoon, I mean, would, would you say, you know, you got to run it, so why not put the quarterback in there that can, that can run and, and can give you the numbers uh, that you need uh, that gets you a hat on hat um, and, and not take a chance with a guy like Tua in this Tennessee game? You know, that, that, is, that is one way to look at it. You can say, let's go with the running quarterback, let's allow it, uh, him to – run the football in tough weather, let's let Tua relax, um, get his knee healthy, get into the bye week, allow him to uh, heal, and then go into LSU. But you can't look past Tennessee, and if you know Jeremy Pruitt and you know Coach David and you know Kirby Smart, their defenses are made to stop the run. Whenever you have success against mm-hmm. Alabama, you have to throw the football and stretch the ball vertically downfield. If you look at years past, South Carolina in 2010 was able to do it with Alshon Jeffrey. Um, 2012, Johnny Menzel was able to do it with Mike Evans. Uh, 2013, same thing. And then when you look at the, how they lost the national championship to Deshaun Watson, he was able to throw the football. So to have success against Alabama defenses, like uh, Jeremy Pruitt's going to be running on Saturday, you have to be able to throw the football. And if you run the ball, it kind of plays right into their wheelhouse, just like Coach David wants people to run the football and make them one-dimensional. So... Um, I mean, it could go either way, and you can we'll see on Saturday how they want to play it. But if they want to win the football game and continue to grow as a football team, I feel like you have to put two on the field, especially since he hasn't played a fourth quarter yet. And if you know it, ten LSU games, you know Auburn games, you know Mississippi State games, they usually go down to the fourth quarter sometimes. So I mean, I, I want this guy to play four quarters of football and show me that he can be on the field for the entire game. Visiting with uh, Vinny Sinceri, the former defensive back for the Crimson Tide. He joins us each Thursday at uh, 1 o'clock here on the Jay Barker Show with Lars Anderson and Kerry Adams. Uh, Vinny, going back in your playing days, Jeremy was your defensive back coach, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell us a little bit about him as far as a coach and, and, and a person, and somebody that you worked closely with, and what do you expect from him uh, in, in, in the knowledge he has of Alabama, their offense, their defense, and even some of his players that he was a part of recruiting? You know, Jeremy Pruitt is probably one of my favorite coaches I've ever played for, um, not just on the football field, but as a person. Whenever my dad left to go to Tennessee uh, after my freshman year, it was tough for me because the main reason why I went to Alabama was to be with my dad and actually spend more time with my dad because he was always recruiting, he was always coaching, and I never, I mean, he was never able to see my football games. He was a big aspect of why I chose to go to Alabama. And when he decided to leave and try and, uh, an opportunity for himself uh jeremy brought me in and he said listen he said i know your dad leave, leaving is going to be tough on you i know that there's a lot of growing pains that's going to happen in this next year but i can guarantee you that i'm going to hold you accountable for everything and make sure that you become not only the best football player but the best person that you can be and i account of what i'm able to do now and how i carry myself a lot to coach through it so i mean he's a he's a, one of my favorite people i've ever been around and I just really think he's going to have a lot of success at Tennessee if they continue to let him do what he wants to do and grow this uh, football program. How long do you think it, w- it will take uh, Coach Pruitt to to build Tennessee back into a, a, a team that is nationally relevant again? You know, I think I think you can see that these kids are starting to buy into a little bit of the trust the process that Coach David has kind of stapled into the Alabama football program. And then you look at Georgia and what Kirby's been able to do to trust the process and they're starting to they bought into it and they won so fast so I think Tennessee the football players and the and the fans are going to start to realize that this is going to work this is going to be something that has success you just have to give it time I think it's going to take probably uh I don't I don't think they're going to be there next year but I think the following year I think they're going to have an opportunity to compete for at least an SEC West 
um, division title and then possibly be able to go to the SEC championship and compete with the Alabama's yellow shoes for an SEC championship, uh, which could lead you to the college football playoff. So, I mean, I think there's a, a lot of opportunity, and I think he gets it done within the next two to three years. Vinny, who would you say has been your defensive player of the year six games in for the Crimson Tide? You know, I think my defensive player of the year so far has to be Deontay Thompson. His ability to get everybody lined up, his ability to come down in the box, his ability to um, get turnovers and be like a ha-ha Clinton Dix, but more, even more physical than ha-ha ever was. I think he's someone that's created a lot of value for himself um, in college. And he was named a midseason All-American for CBS, and he deserves it. He's been playing really well. He's a smart player, and he's created a lot of value for himself to hopefully be playing on Sunday. What's your prediction this weekend? Give me a score. What do you think is going to happen? You know, I think I, I think Tennessee is going to throw some stuff at Alabama and this Alabama defense that they haven't seen. Um, both Coach Smart and Coach Pruitt are very very fam familiar with each other, and they, a lot of coaches at Tennessee are familiar with this Alabama team. So I think I think it's going to be a little bit of a higher scoring game. I'm going to say Alabama thirty five, Tennessee seventeen. All right, my man. Thanks so much. Always a great time with you on Thursdays at 1 o'clock here on the Jay Barker Show. Thank you, Vinny. Appreciate you guys. Have a good week. Roll Tide.